Hi, and welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, it's going to be drinking. Look, look, it's going to be smoking. Look, look, it's going to be swearing. Look, look, you've been warned. So look, look. Oh, yeah, you better look, fucking look. Here I come. In three, bang, two, <laughs> one. Bang, welcome, everybody. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew. Welcome. My name is Shamar Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News. The greatest show on earth. Great show. Huh. Huh. The multiverse. Bang! Greatest show in the Dagon multiverse. Bang! We have a great show for you today. Naturally. All right. We have a great show for you today. Bang, bang, bang. Let's check it out. Oh, yeah. Let's get right into it. Let's jump right in. Oh, oh, okay. So here's the big one. I know, I know. Cardano. Well, these are all big, actually, today. Cardano. Oh, so we're going to talk about the Cardano-Ethiopian partnership. So this is the big Africa thing. We're going to hear about it. I'm not going to lie to you. I can't say that I'm that impressed. What do you mean, Shamari? You'll see what I mean. I thought it was going to be a little bigger. All right, we'll talk about that when we get there. But anything's good now. I mean, you know, onboarding is an onboarding. Money is money, dog. So look, we ain't going to complain about it. We'll take where we can get it. And then Vanak. Bitcoin ETF is pushed off to June, so the SEC has said we're gonna we're, we're gonna we're gonna push it off till June. Now I know what you're saying. Fuck June, Shamari. Settle down, brother. This is good news. This is good news. Believe me, as a 21 year professional investor, as a man whose money has made him money for 21 years, who watches Bloomberg and CNBC obsessively, and has seen SEC rulings on. Fuck. Everything over the past 21 years. I'm going to tell you, this is good news. Don't worry about it. This is good news. I'm going to show you why. And then finally, the United States' fifth largest bank. Bang. Going to offer some of that crypto custody. Look, look. And I'm going to tell you why that's a big deal. Major deal. Major deal. Major deal. And then we'll do the shout outs and airdrops as per usual so let's begin how we begin brothers and sisters hope you're all having a good week bye yes and then we go over here and we do a little bit of look look bye yes then we do a little bit of refresh let's refresh to get the fresh numbers all right fresh numbers what do we got bitcoin fifty four thousand seven hundred and forty four dollars and when i left you yesterday oh we actually went down a little bit when I left you yesterday, we were at $55,400. So we've actually gone down. Uh, what's that? 900 and... Wait, wait, sorry. Is that 900? No, no, no. Sorry, 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 sorry. 600 and... $666. Is that true? Yeesh, Mark of the Beast right there. <laughs> we went down $666. Yeesh. All right, let's just move on from that then. Let's move on. I don't want to get tainted by any. Yeesh. <laughs> Anything demonic. All right, let's do it. Top 10 of the day, brothers and sisters. Top 10. Usual dag on band of miscreants. Usual suspects. Top 10. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Binance Coin, XRP, Tether, Cardano, Dogecoin, Polkadot, Uniswap, and bang, Litecoin. Still holding on number 10. Yes. All right. Holy shit, I can see it already. Let's look at the market moves of the day. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Did he do this again? Singleton's up, Singleton's down. Except look at Dogecoin. Elon Musk might have said some shit again. Oh, you know, Elon Musk tried to get Ellen DeGeneres. She's a comedian here in America. Uh, he tried to get her to accept Dogecoin, I guess was the big news today. He didn't tweet. He he. I guess he was trying to get her to do something. All right, Singleton's up, Singleton's down. Or maybe he did tweet, I don't know. But he also tried to get her to accept Dogecoin. Singleton's up, Singleton's down. Singleton's up, Singleton's down. Literally, Singleton's up, Singleton's down this time. Single digits up, single digits down. 
You always say that. Yeah, yeah, I know. But this time I mean it. <laughs> single digits up, single digits down. <laughs> I just say single digits up, single digits down, and then point out the big ones. Oh, fuck. Just keep it simple. Single digits up, single digits down. Two, single digits up, two, single digits down. All right. Let's see who lost money today. You see anything on here you like? Go get it because, bang, it's on sale. What do we got? Bang. Oh, yeah, these sales are skimpy. Okay. All right, top 10 losers. What are we working with? We got, whoa, hold on. Let me get a second. Hold on. It's look like, it looks like if you had the color blue in your logo, yeesh, not a good day for you. All right. Top 10 losers. Waves, Harmony, Voyager Token, Wazerax, uh, Digibyte, Ox, Zillica. Actually, there's some good, some good news coming out of Zillica lately. <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. This market is immature and... Dumb money. Use that time to accumulate Zillica hodlers. Terra, Horizon, and Cello. Let's look at who made money today. I'm not telling you to go buy Zillica, but I'm saying if you're already a hodler, no, don't be afraid to accumulate because you're doing good stuff. Well, not you, but they are. But look, you've invested wisely. All right, let's look at the top 10 gainers. Holy, these gains are skimpy too, though. Holy, this market was just a, a nothing burger, I guess, all today. All right. <laughs> Fucking Dogecoin. That's some funny shit. All right. Oh, there's that anchor thing. A whole bunch of people are talking about it. All right, hold on. Let's just, just yap about the fold. Look, look, top 10 gainers. Dogecoin, Decentraland, Anchor, Phantom, Uniswap, Ave, Engine Coin, uh, Monero, e Ethereum, and Icon. Oh, this fucking anchor thing. Right, it got, it got listed. Ooh, excuse me, you got listed on Coinbase the other day. Bang, look at that, 13% up today. All right, let's look at the, uh, what are we, what is this called? Total mark cap. Oh, still just hanging on, just hanging on though. All right, total mark cap, $2.086 trillion. When I left you yesterday, we were at $2.105 trillion. So we've gone down 0 0.0, hold on, 0 0.039 trillion dollars. All right, let's see what the 24-hour volume is. All right, nothing exciting. All right, 24-hour volume is $131.5 billion dollars. When I left you yesterday, we were at $146.0 billion. So you've gone up exactly, what's that? Uh, $5.3 billion. All right, let's get to the stories. Bang! There's the market overview for the day. Let's move on. Bang! Cardano developer IOHK strikes partnership with Ethiopian government. Now, let's read this byline. You know, Hoskinson's been kind of hyping this up for like a little while for the past couple months hasn't he well let's go to the byline that's this part down at the bottom under the main that's this part here in case you don't know what that means so look the partnership between iohk and the ethiopian government will see a blockchain based identity solution rolled out to schools nationwide Yeah, I was hoping for something a little bigger than that. I mean, this is good. I mean, nationwide. I mean, you're going to be the solution. And this whole blockchain thing, uh, identity stuff, and um, and with schooling as well, so that companies can really check your true school records on the blockchain. Uh, I mean, I don't know how much of a big deal that is. It is a thing, though. It is a thing. But I mean, you know. Cardano, the way this guy was hyping it up, um, and in full disclosure, I'm a Cardano hodler, <laughs> so I was waiting for something big, because I'm also an IOTA hodler, and IOTA, you know, says shit like, 
Bang! We're going to be used in five smart cities in in Europe. Bang! We're we're going to be the well, the blockchain of the mining industry for all of Europe. Right? That's the kind of shit I thought we were going to hear out of Cardano here, like you know, being some big mega industry in Ethiopia. <sighs> Identities for schools. Well, all right. I mean, they need them. Like I said. It is a true thing. Uh, employers do want to know that the people they're hiring are actually qualified. A lot of people lie and stuff. Um, you know, they say they're from Harvard and they're from somewhere else. Hmm. All right. So let's check it out. Hold on. Let's check this thing out. Yeah, I was hoping for something bigger, like more like the IOTA stuff, right? Right, IOTA, when you hear like IOTA in the European Union, you know, is, is using them for, what is it, 95% of all retail transactions are going to be over the IOTA tangle soon? Like, that's amazing. Well, that's the kind of shit I want to hear. <laughs> school ids all right <laughs> let's go i know but it is a serious thing actually um this whole thing about um knowing someone's true education and stuff like that so iohk has partnered with the ethiopian government for a nationwide identity system based on atala prism since november ethiopia's tigray region has been the scene of a bloody conflict which has mired the government in controversy yeah yeah, they say they say they have video of government soldiers fucking executing people. And in these sort of conflicts, of course, the government of Ethiopia says, no, 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 those are the rebels. They stole Ethiopian military uniforms and are doing it to make us look bad. Who's telling the truth? Well, who the fuck knows? It's how these things go. Dag on civil wars. All right. That's the problem with the Civil War. Yeah, well, both sides can get their hands on the uniforms, can't they? <laughs> because they're from the same country. Look, all right. Cardano developer IOHK has unveiled a deal with the Ethiopian government, which would see the world's big... Oh, and you know what's so funny about this Ethiopian war thing, though? Well, I guess it's not funny, but just... I don't know if the word's ironic or what, but... the The head of Ethiopia... He got the Nobel Peace Prize last year. <laughs> yeah. And then he launched a war on this Tigray area. Ah, yeah, this year. Yeah, he got the Nobel Peace Prize last year. It's kind of like, uh, you know, the Nobel the Nobel people, they gave Obama um, the Nobel Peace Prize, right? Really, it was a representation of, you know, oh, America, finally hoping maybe you guys aren't racist anymore or something, right? And so they gave him the peace prize. Yeah, do you know Obama blew away? He he launched more drone strikes uh, than George Bush did. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He was blowing away terrorists left and right over there in Afghanistan. <laughs> Yo, and collateral damage was hefty. Was hefty. Was hefty. He just blow a motherfucker away. Yeah. Do you know what's funny? You can go on the internet. And Google U.S. drone strike footage. Yeah, you can see them. They have them, right? They have released the videos. So you can actually see the gun camera footage of, like, our our airplanes, our helicopters from any country. If you go to IAF, Israeli Air Force, and look at when they blow up shit in Gaza or they blow up shit in Lebanon, right? The terrorists over there. Yeah, yeah. Because they want to brag about it. They want to show the terrorists. This is what's going to happen to you. <clears throat> so you can actually watch that shit on YouTube. Holy fuck, man. I watch this one. <laughs> I watch them all the time, actually, when I'm bored, right? Like, what am I going to watch? I'm all right. I listen to the news, like Bloomberg, and then I watch drone strike footage. So these terrorists <laughs> in Afghanistan, they're walking over this mountain, and... Uh, yeah, the, I don't know what it was. Was it a jet fighter or a drone or what it was? Holy fuck, we blew the fuck out of these guys. But what was funny about this video was, like, you could actually see the body parts flying, right? I mean, I guess that's not funny. 
it's actually probably a little grotesque. I guess I, now that I think about it, but right, because usually it's just boom and it's just a, a big flash, and then you just see the bodies around. But this one, you can actually see the parts fucking flying. I was like, oh, hey, you guys got done bad. All right, but <laughs> how do we get from Cardano to terrorist drone strikes in Afghanistan? I know how we got there. Fuel. That's how we got there. That's how we're doing it tonight, brothers and sisters. Shamar's Field. <clears throat> Probably going to be some yap. <laughs> well, there just was. Oh, because we were talking about Ethiopia, right, and the Tigray thing. That's how we got to terrorists and jihadis and miscreants. Right, right, right. Okay. Right, right. Oh, yeah, because the guy, yeah, last year they gave him the fucking <laughs> the Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah, and this year he launched an invasion on this place called Tigray. Well, it's within Ethiopia, so, you know, he's putting down the rebels, but. Oh, not such a peaceful motherfucker, is he? All right. <laughs> That's how it goes. You can't be so peaceful with these daggone miscreants. Oh, yeah. Jihad and shit. Sometimes. Gotta lay down the law sometime. All right, guys. <laughs> All right, guys. Cardano developer IOHK has unveiled a deal with the Ethiopian government, which would see the world's biggest blockchain de deployment. <clears throat> wow. Hey, well, that's not the world's biggest. IOTA has the world's biggest. Uh, they're, they're, IOTA is being deployed in for the whole supply chain of the European Union. Yes. Of the whole European Union. So whoever wrote this story is a moron, doesn't know any better. A blockchain-based national identity system rolled out throughout Ethiopia. So announced today, the deal will see Cardano-based decentralized identity solution, Atala, PRISM, mm. initially deployed in the country's schools. Oh, initially. I like that word, initially, because that means you're going to deploy it more. Yeah, see, when you read, you got to, every word counts. Yes, every word counts. So I like that word, initially. Yeah. That means we're going to start here and expand. No. Look. So initially deployed to the country's schools, it will be used to create tamper-proof records of educational performance across 3,500 schools and 5 million students to instantly verify grades. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Hold on a second, guys. Oh, the allergies today. Yes, drippy nose. Drippy nose. Man, you doing coke? No, dog, I got allergies. Settle down. I'm not a chemical monster. I'm a weed monster. Look, look, trees. So listen, the much hype announcement has been leaked several months previously. Exactly. For for months we've been waiting for this. I thought it'd be bigger than this. Anyway. <clears throat> the much hype announcement has been leaked several months previously. While Cardano founder <laughs> and IOHK CEO Charles Hoskinson has previously publicized plans to introduce the technology in track and trace of smallholder agricultural supply chains, as well as digital IDs for transport and healthcare. There we go, supply chain. Let's talk about yeah, let's talk big man things, grown man stuff. Fuck, fucking school IDs, as well as digital IDs for transport and healthcare. He's also spoken of a Cardano hub in Ethiopia's capital, Addis Ababa, catering to other African nations, including South Africa, Kenya, and Nigeria. He's also alluded, uh, that's right, it's also alluded, 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 alluded. It's a lot of allusions, alluding to stuff. When are we going to get the chicken? All right. He has also alluded to a big telecoms deal in Tanzania. Further announcements about uh, Cardano's future in Africa are promised during Cardano's Africa special to be broadcast on Thursday. Oh, all right. So look, on Thursday, guys, looks like Cardano's going to tell us all they're doing in Africa. Let's hope we hear some good news. Nice. <clears throat> Ethiopia, Ethiopia, Ethiopia's blockchain plans. IOHK frames Cardano and Talaprism 
as a game-changing technology that will ultimately democratize social and financial services for the world's 1.7 billion unbanked people in Africa. <coughs> and Ethiopia's allure as a testbed is undeniable. The country's economy... The, the country's economy has been one of the most closed in Africa, while it boasts the second biggest population on the continent, 110 million people. The scheme in part is part of the country's digital transformation strategy, Digital Ethiopia 2025. As part of the program, the Ethiopian government has introduced a national identity standard with the Talaprism, the first system to use to issue IDs based on the standard. <clears throat> The digital transformation strategy will also encompass ambitious economic reforms, including the planned creation of Ethiopia's first stock market and government plans to issue all teachers and students with tablets and a dedicated internet network for instant access to their academic records. The program, however, takes place against the backdrop of government-imposed internet shutdowns in the region of Tigray. That's that place where the war is going on up in the northwest which human rights advocates say has contributed to a humanitarian crisis. Yeah, it has. Fighting continues in the conflict in the conflict raged, uh, ravaged region. And last month, the United Nations raised the alarm of major violations of international law. A starvation crisis looms. The Ethiopian state was normally considered a stronger state than the average African state until three years ago. Biniam... Bidasa, <laughs> Biniam, another guy with your name. Biniam Bidasso, a researcher at the Collaborative Africa Budget uh, Reform Initiative in Pretoria, South Africa, told Decrypt, things are much more unstable since the transition of the new government, Bidasso said. But he added that technological innovations are long overdue, particularly because the previous administration was too inward-looking. However, the liberalizing measure taken by the government Measures taken by the government are less likely to move the needle on investor in confidence than a strong, stable state would. So against that backdrop of the conflict in Tigray, the wisdom of IOHK partnership with the government accused by the World Peace Foundation of widespread and systemic destruction and impoverishment, not to mention killing and rape, has been questioned by Cardano supporters. <laughs> exactly. Look at what they're accused of. Widespread systematic destruction and impoverishment and rape and killings. Right? The guy the guy who runs the place, he, he got the Nobel Peace Prize last year. You know how it is, man. Fucking soldiers just get all stupid and do stupid shit. All right. But anyways, so anyways, it's something. It's a partnership. It's a deal. And what I like was the word. Where was that word? Where was that word? Well, the word was initially. That's why I like the word initially. In other words, they're going to do more stuff. It looks like they have more planned. And so, guys, let's especially what I like about this story is let's hold on for this Thursday about the, Cardaf the Cardano Africa special, about what they're going to be doing all over Africa in Tanzania, uh, Nigeria, and South Africa and Kenya. So... That's good stuff. Cardano's romping and... I mean, that's a start. That's a start. Um, Cardano's romping and stomping around Africa. And it, it, like they said, they want to expand it, right? Into healthcare and well, a bunch of other shit, right? Yeah, here it is. Tracking strays. Oh, yeah. And the, the what was it? Smallholder agricultural supply chains. Bang, right. Let's get going. Let's get going. And so, good stuff for Cardano hodlers. Bah! Let's move on. All right, the SEC pushes decision on Vanek Bitcoin ETF until June. Now, I know what you're saying. Shmori, man. We should have heard about this shit next month. I know, which is just around the corner where next month is only three days away, right? I know, we should have heard. It should be coming in May, but uh, they're pushing it off to June. And so <clears throat> I want to tell you this. <clears throat> Shmori, that sucks. No, it doesn't suck. In fact, I think the exact opposite. I think this is fucking great. 
Yeah, because because why is it great, Shamari? Well, if they were going to deny the ETF, they just deny it, right? When the time comes next month, eh, denied. But the fact that the, the 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 agency is saying, look, just give us a little more time to look at this. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Oh yeah, Gary Gensler's in there now. Oh yeah. Remember, and he's a blockchain master. Like a master. He taught blockchain at MIT. That's where all the nerds are of America. He taught them. So, now he runs. Bang. Whoop, whoop. Look, look. Settle down. Bang. The SEC. Well, now he's the chairman. Right? He's the chairman. Back in the days <laughs> when... When Jay Cockblocker Clayton ran that shit, bang, denied, bang, denied, bang, denied. Now that Jay Clayton's in there, uh, whoa, 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 settle out. Now that Gary Gensler's in there, bro, let us just have a little more time to look at this. Let us just have a little more time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Because if they were going to deny it, they just deny it. Get the fuck out of here. You fucking miscreant, fuck off. Denied. But the fact that they're saying, give us a little more time. Right? Well, let me put it another way. Well, Gary Gensler is a blockchain master. Yeah, so he's going to teach all of those fucksticks. I mean, he's not going to teach them what he teaches them in, when he's doing a lecture at Blockchain 101 at MIT. But he's going to tell them, like, don't worry. Well, I don't know what he's going to say. I'm not a fortune teller. I don't know what he's going to say. But I'm assuming it's going to be blockchain and distributed ledger technology provider uh, favorable. See what I'm saying? <clears throat> See what I'm saying? Uh, 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 uh. The fact that he's saying, hey, just give it another more month to consider this. Well, that means they're considering instead of just Bang! Denial. Get out of here. And so that's why this is a good thing. Um, Because it shows they actually care and they're thinking about the thing, right? They didn't want to think about it. They just fucking deny it and get out, you know, get back on with their day. You know? <laughs> Busting insider traders on Wall Street and stuff, right? But the fact that they're taking their time to think about this thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let me get a sip, and we shall proceed. Uh, don't think of this as a bad thing. Sometimes things are not happening to you. They're happening for you. Yeah, this gives Gary Gensler another extra month to convince the other miscreants in the SEC to vote yes on the ETF. Remember, he's just one vote. He's the chairman, but he is just one vote on the committee, on the commission, whatever it's called. Well, not whatever it's called. It's called a commission. So he's only one vote, but he's the chairman. All right. And usually when you're the chairman, you set the tone. You know, you set the tone for the organization. This is how I want things to go. This is how things are going to run. This is how we're going to do it around these parts. Right? You're the head motherfucker in charge now. This is how things are going to go down. Right? Right? You're the boss now. And when the boss of the SEC is a blockchain master, well, yeah, he's going to change that tone, right? Jay Clayton had one tone. Yeah, well, Gary Gensler, he's setting a new tone. Right? Well, we're going to deny this. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, hey, hey. Right? He's telling them, hey, hey, settle down. Settle down. Let me tell you guys about the blockchain a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's a different tone, different attitude. Different vibes. All right, let's see what Gensler's up to. Bye. Oh, yeah. This is good news. I want you to be happy. The United States Security Exchange Commission, led by Gary Gensler, has extended the original 45-day window to approve a Bitcoin ETF from asset manager Van Eck. 
According to a filing from the SEC on Wednesday, the regulatory body will push the deadline for approving or disproving Vanex ETF from May 3rd till June 17th. Oh, fuck. We were supposed to hear about this like next week. Dad, God. Oh, all the way till June 17th. But anyways, like I said, the fact that they're thinking about it, not just being like, denied, next, you know? Good stuff, good stuff. Fuck, June 17th, though, an additional 45 days. Fuck. So the commission finds that it is appropriate to designate a longer period within which to take action on the proposed rule change so that it has sufficient time to consider the proposed rule change and the comments received, said SEC Assistant Secretary Jay Matthews de les Denier in the filing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So Vanek submitted paperwork to apply for a Bitcoin ETF with the SEC last month. Following the asset manager withdrawing a similar application that it filed in January in partnership with blockchain startup SolidX. All right, they remember they withdrew it because I still had Gary Gensler there, so don't want to get denied, just fucking withdraw it. So both Valkyrie Digital Assets and Fidelity have already filed registration with the commission to form Bitcoin ETFs in January and March. Respectively. You think they're going to fucking turn down the Fidelity ETF? Really? I mean, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, like I said, you know, I always tell you guys, I don't know the future. I mean, obviously, I know there's a tsunami coming just because I know how markets work. But whether approvals or whatnot, I don't know. But I'll just say I'm bullish. I'm bullish. Let's put it that way. I'm very bullish on these. When you say, hey, just give us a little more time to think. Nice. Nice. You know what I'm saying? That's nice. It means you're thinking about it. Okay. So the regular re- regulatory the regulatory body has the ability to extend the deliberation windows up to 240 days before delivering a final decision with 45, 45, 90 and 60 day extensions announced separately. Should the SEC continue to delay its decision on Vanek? The company may not receive a definitive answer until mid-November. I don't think they're going to wait that long, but they could. You know, I just don't think so in all my experience of watching how the SEC does shit. Uh, no Bitcoin ETF has been approved by regulators in the United States. And given the SEC seeming reticence in doing so, many experts do not expect an approval soon. What? Fuck them. We're having an approval. I think so. However, many crypto ETFs have been approved in Canada this year. And that's the thing. I think they just want to extend this. And just look at what's happening in the Germans. What's happening in Germany? What's happening in Switzerland? What's happening in Canada? All these ETFs we've been reading about. The, the argument is always market manipulation, market manipulation, market manipulation. All right, so give us another 45 days to look at this thing. And obviously, let's get real. They're probably just going to be watching Canada (laughs) and watching to see if shit gets fucked up up there. Right? If Canadian soccer mom and dad get fucked over, well, all right, all right. We're not doing that down here. We won't do that. But if everything's smooth, if everything's gravy, baby, well, yes. Approved. That's what we're going to see down here. Approved. All right? So, uh, (laughs) let's get real. That's what they're doing. I think they just want to see what happens with those other funds. And as long as everything goes good up there for another 45 days, what, till June 17th? All right, well, bang, approved. So, look, this is not a bad thing. This is a good thing. It shows that they're looking at it, right? Because they, if they were just like, fuck this, they would just, bang, deny it. You know, just deny it and get out of here, you fucker. All right, get out of here. You know, don't bother us with these these stupid ETF applications all the time. <laughs> but they're not doing that. They're saying, wait a minute. We're not going to approve you yet or disapprove. Just give us a little time. And I tell you right now what Gary Gensler's doing. All those commissioners that are on the SEC... Well, they're the same commissioners that were there under Jay Clayton. 
And I think what Gensler's doing is, right, you know, these guys are, are up there and they're like, well, we want to deny it, market manipulation. He's like, well, do we really? Do we really? See what I'm saying? And by waiting, it gives him the time to, like I said, look at what's going on in Canada. Look at what's going on on the Swiss stock exchange. Look at what's going on on the German stock exchanges. If there's no manipulation there, he'll say, Really? I think we need to prove. And like I said, the chairman sets the tone of the organization. And plus, he'll have the evidence, though. Okay, let's get serious. Well, that is serious. Obviously, the chairman does set the tone, but let's also just get serious about the technicalities is when there's no market manipulation going on anywhere else and everyone else in the world is starting to pop off ETFs. Well, we read those South African ones that are coming out. We read the one in Dubai that's coming out. We read the one, uh, well, I didn't read it to you yet, but I'm telling you, Banco de Brasilia is coming out with one. Yeah, well, you're not going to get left behind. It's America. Come on. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're the financial innovators of the world. Were you scared, America? <laughs> you scared of something? And like I said, you're the SEC, so if there's market manipulation, well, then go arrest them. Make an example of them, and no one will do that again. So we'll see, guys. We'll see. But um, I, I think that this is a bullish signal for an ETF this year. When? On June 17th? Was that the date? Because you know I'm going to be watching that date. Oh, yeah, there it is, June 17th. You watching that date like a motherfucker. Oh, yeah. That's the date. That's the date. That is the date. June 17th, guys. All right. So just a little update what's going on. And uh, we'll get back on it on June 17th. And I hope we have favorable regulations. All right. Bang. U.S. Bank dives into Bitcoin with crypto custody offering. Bang. So U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in America. And while they're offering custody, well, if I'm a hedge fund, I'll custody there, no problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? If I'm a family office, I'll custody there, no problem. Uh, if I'm a high net worth individual, well, I'll custody there, no problem. Right? Oh, sorry. Hold on one second, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Little WhatsApp action, little WhatsApp. It's the weed man coming to bring me my goods. <laughs> All right. So look. Okay, so we were talking about, yeah, fifth largest bank in America. And they're going to custody. So they are going to custody. And like we talked about last year, the OCC here in America, the Office of the Comptroll of the Currency, they're the ones who control America's banks. Uh, they said, hey, if you want to start custodying, go for it. And so U.S. Bank is going for it. <laughs> and then the fifth largest in America. So uh, a lot of big financial institutions, uh, like I said, not every financial institution is going to want to custody their own shit. You know, maybe you just use U.S. Bank to custody your crap if you're into it, right? Or Fidelity, right? Fidelity is custodying a lot of uh, institutional investor stuff as well. Um, so, uh, this is another avenue, uh, for the big boys to come and feel safe. Uh, big licensed registered bank, obviously fifth, fifth largest in America. Yeah. Well, uh, all right. So is there anything else to say? Not yet. So let's go. So crypto's continued growth has seen an influx of institutional investors into the space. Most are exploring the unregulated asset class <laughs> due to consistent demand from institutions. Bang! What I've been preaching to you, demand from the institutions. Back in the days, we never, especially you who've been on this channel, did we ever hear about demand from institutions? Not like we hear about it now. Right? Every ETF, every ETP, everything I read you, the CEO always says, well, it was because our customers demanded it, right? Look at that JP Morgan crap I read yesterday. Jamie Dimon. <laughs> Moron. Bitcoin's going to be bullshit. Really? Oh, well, things are a little different now, aren't they? 
So look, customer demand from institutions, the tsunami folk. So in a recent turn of events, legacy banking institutions are also publicly announcing plans to provide crypto services to the high value customers, big money. The latest is the fifth largest American bank, the U.S. Bank Corp. U.S. Bank joins the crypto train. U.S. Bank, a subsidiary of holding company U.S. Bank Corp., has announced that it will be launching a new custody product for managing cryptocurrencies. American Banker Report. Oh, American Banker Report. The fifth largest American bank with over $555.4 billion under assets under management <clears throat> said it would partner with an unnamed subcustodian. Ah, oh, so they're not doing the custody themselves. So it also said that it had been tapped to administer NYDIG's upcoming Bitcoin exchange traded fund, ETF, if the Security Exchange Commission eventually does approve it. The bank said that it was possible due to the long-standing relationship with the financial services firm. So U.S. Bank is going to custody... Um, uh, who, who, whose thing was this? NYDIG's ETF... Um, if they're approved. Um, <clears throat> U.S. Bank said its decision to offer crypto custody services is due to growing client demands for them, with notable pension funds and insurance companies seeking exposure to the volatile assets. According to these clients, crypto is an asset class they would love to own a share of due to its meteoric rise in the past dozen years. <laughs> oh, lay. Like I told you guys, do you see that? These rich people want to own it. it it's not that there's a, not a tsunami because they don't want it. And we're begging them, oh, please come by the Bitcoin. Please come by the V-Chain. No, they want to. They have to have proper custody. They have to have proper regulations. That's all. And that's why when I tell you, you're going to be rich. Yeah. Look, here in America, look, banksters run shit. Hey, let's get real about it. You know, banksters and big business run shit around here, around these parts. <laughs> you know, here in America, banksters, big business, and the military, law enforcement, you know, military and law enforcement, they run shit. Everyone else are just here keeping this place going, right? Keeping it chugging. And, uh, well, the banksters are going to get what they want, right? Remember we read about that, 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 uh, thing in Congress, um, Right, that's going to give us the regulatory clarity where they're where they're going to build the the tr the the commission to study it for a year and then give a uh, an answer. Look, man, come on, the answer is going to be yes, and um, yeah, we're going to be flying. So, all right. Anyways, <clears throat> U.S. Bank has been working behind the scenes and recently spearheaded an investment round for institutional cryptocurrency infrastructure security. The deal, which also had other banking notables like State Bank and Wisdom Tree Investments, saw $30 million infused into the security platform. The Minnesota-based American Bank said it had been exploring the crypto space as far back as 2015. It also said that it has been able to develop the required infrastructure for cryptocurrency custody, such as anti-money laundering protocols and know your customers' processes. So that's the FATF compliance. FATF compliance, it's the financial regime that our countries run under now. Every financial institution has to be FATF compliant. So you have to have anti-money laundering uh, protocols in place, know your client protocols in place, and anti-terrorist financing protocols in place. So they've done it. They're saying here. And U.S. Bank Strategy Chief <clears throat> Christine Walden Waldron noted that this really picked up in the crypto space following a directive by the OCC, bag the office of the comptroller of the currency for national banks to provide custody for the crypto, for the crypto clients, the crypto customers. Exactly. That was the beauty. That's what made crypto just blast off since last year. Every single American bank is now allowed to custody it. I, I, I was telling you, and I, a couple of the brothers here have been telling you, like, in a couple of years, maybe not even a couple of years, by next year, you're going to be able to hold your Bitcoin at your bank account. Yeah, where it won't be hacked, where it'll be nice and safe. <laughs> you know, 
uh, uh, stuff like that, right? Um, so Waldron also noted that the bank may not just custody the premier digital asset Bitcoin alone, saying it can't just be a Bitcoin storyline. See, they're going to custody all of it. That's what he's saying. It can't just be a Bitcoin storyline. We're going to custody all of it. What are you going to custody, dog? All of it. All of them. <laughs> Bang. Legacy banks moving into crypto. Institutional investors have been largely reluctant to move into the crypto space following the, fog of, the foggy regulatory goal, goal posts in the nascent industry. But in a stellar year, many legacy banks are gradually looking to take a piece of the crypto pie. Of course, they're going to take it all. Some of the early adopters are Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley, who are currently planning to offer crypto-focused wealth funds to their clients. Foremost, America Bank Bank, oh, sorry, America Bank, Bank of New York Mellon, is also in for the ride, is also in for the ride after it announced that it would be custodying crypto assets in the coming months. Bang! So when you have BNY Mellon, you've got US Bank, you've got Goldman Sachs Morgan. Well, Goldman Sachs and Morgan offering funds. They're not offering, they're not offering custody. But when you have BNY Mellon and US Bank offering custody services, well, if I'm a big major hedge fund, gazillion dollar hedge fund, well, guess where I'm getting custodied. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff. You know, we we Americans, uh, citizens, what do you call us? Uh, retailers. Right, we we you know we get to onboard our money through Coinbase. Pretty much is what I do. Well, actually, my Coinbase account because of what happened. But Coinbase is where I, I most Americans do it from. Um, yeah, well, the big mo the big mega guys need need a place to onboard too. Like I said, like I've told you a million times, if I'm a mega hedge fund, yeah, well, I'm not using Coinbase. Fuck stick that. Now, right? I'm going to use a proper bank, right? U.S. Bank, J.P. Morgan. What was the other bank? Actually, J.P. Morgan's doing the fund. What was the other one? Oh yeah, BNY Mellon. You know what I mean? The number one, the oldest bank in all of America. That's what I'm going to custody with. And when they offer those services, I will be glad to jump right on board. Bang bang, bang bang, bang. So good stuff, guys. We are moving forward. All right, let's, let's check out this. Bang, what we got over here? Look, look, Lorna. Look, look, Lorna. Bang, Lorna saw that mark, mark and said, look, look. Oh, yeah. Bang, I'm all in. Daggone right she did. <clears throat> As you can see from that daggone portfolio. Look, love you, girl, see you, girl. Bang. Slappy, hold down the insurgency in the north. Love you, see you, brother. Bang. New guy. Bit my. Oh, big time crypto. Crypto not. B chain IOTA link band. XLM EWT AGI SHR and all right and a bunch more. Wow. That's a winning portfolio right there, though. Look, look. Love you, brother. brother. Bang. Cool. To their list. Oh, he added me to some list. Whatever that means. All right. What else we got? Well, and I'm honored to be on, uh, asked to be put on your list. All right. Dstead731. Whatever you think you should know, just ask. I'm not shy. All right. Love it. See you the bang. Michelangelo13. Love it. See you the bang. Oh, yeah. Chief of Visa on the Pasquayaki tribe. All my tribal brothers. Look, look, V-Chain masters, V-Chain holders, V-Chain killers. Tool master. Love you, Chief. See you, Chief. Bye. <clears throat> Robbie Hardaway. Love and see with him. Bye. I haven't seen Native Warrior there lately, Chief. Where's he at? Bye. Tell him, look, where you at, dog? <laughs> Harassing one one viewer to go harass another viewer to watch the show. <laughs> Look. Well, he's the chief of the tribe. You can tell him. 
You can tell him he's allowed to. He's cheap. There's my loyalist from Europe. Look. Universal misanthrope. There but zebra though. Bang. BDM. Connecting the dots. Let up with Zebra though. Bang. There's everybody. Huh, not many. Uh, where's everybody tonight? Anyways. Grinchable, Grinchable. Let up with Zebra the Bang. Fire Bunny. Let up with Zebra there. Bang. Beautiful Brawlies. <sighs> Love it, Lady Sea Lady. Bang. Send me a fucking umbrella. Every once in a while, I got a reminder. <laughs> Andrew Chada, he knows all about it. This is a market master right here. How do you win in the markets? Just hurdle, because the juice is worth the squeeze. <laughs> Love you, Andrew. See you, Andrew. Bye, Larry Brothers. You with the bye. Yes. Exactly. Huh? Andrew, he's, he's a smarty pants, right? He picks up all the little smart shit that I say. He knows. All right, what do we got here? Shane, proud to be an Indian Muslim. Indian Muslim, yeah. That's pretty hardcore. Do you live in India and being Muslim? Because that's hardcore, especially under the BJP. Harendra Modi, she's not very Muslim friendly. I know about his little shit that he did in that province when he let all those Muslims get massacred. All right, brother. <sighs> Stay strong, brother. These black people here think they have it bad. Yeah, well. Stay strong, brother. <laughs> You've had thousands of years of it. Well, maybe hundreds. Well, so the blacks here, but, you know, yours is hardcore. All right, love you, brother. See you for the bang. All right, it's all hardcore. It's all hardcore. I'm demeaning what happened here. All right, what do we got? Binium, CB News. Nexon's purchase of Bitcoin by Owen Mahoney. I know, I know. This is that big ass, uh, what is it, a Japanese video game thing or something? I know, and they bought like $155 million worth of Bitcoin today. So putting it on their books, they're putting it on their books, uh, like Elon Musk, like uh, a bunch of these guys around here are doing. And so taking them off the market, creating scarcity, bang, thus driving up price. Bang. I know, I was thinking of reading it, but yeah, I thought these were better. See me news. Yes, Binium, what? CB News, huge. Oh. What? Iran's central bank to allow money changers, banks, to pay for imports using mined crypto. Oh. Oh, yeah, I read this. Um, yeah, well, good. <laughs> they got to pay for shit somehow. You know, they're being sanctioned left and right. So, I mean, what do you expect? Bye. Good stuff. CB News, what, Binium? The future of ETH chain Thor, Enterprise NFT Ecosystem by VeChain Official. Well, everyone's getting into the NFT market. This is the year of the NFT. All right, we talked about it. I've said it here a bunch of times. Uh, 2019 was the year of the stable coin. 2020 was the year of, uh, what do you call that shit? DeFi, DeFi. This year is the year of NFT and ETF. So look, not surprising that B chains getting in on the act. Bang. Oh, that's enough. Where is everybody? Oh, a couple more followers and then we're out of here. Let's get out of here. Uh now, level the zebra the bang. Oh, we did these yesterday. Yeah, yeah, we did that. All right, we already did this. Crypto over there is bang. All right, let me just get the regulars and then we get out of here. Wesley, level the zebra the bang. Uh, Banks, level the zebra the bang. And Stefan, been with us for a while. Love your brother, see you, brother. Bang. All right, let's get back to bang. Let's get back to the Death Star. Let's get back to the Death Star. Yes. All right. So we had a great show for you today. Great show for you today. Everything's moving forward nice and smooth. So, first story was Cardano Ethiopian Partnership. So, uh, 
They're going to be deployed. They're going to deploy Cardano in all the schools. I guess that's not the way you say it. I guess all the students will be, I don't know how you say it, but all the students will be on the Cardano blockchain. Uh, you're going to know their true grades, their true stuff. They can't fake it, um, which is a big deal around the world. That is a thing. That's a thing. Um, people faking their education and stuff. Um, that, that's that been a thing before this blockchain crap. Uh, like years ago. So that's a thing. Like I said, I'm not going to lie to you. This is, I was hoping it's going to be a bigger thing. But what they said that, they said that Cardano, this is the initial, the initial use of Cardano in Ethiopia. And, uh, you know, we should see other stuff rolling out uh, soon. Oh, oh, they got the, uh, hold on, let's go back there and look. Cardano's got the, what's that shit? Hold on. Bang. Uh, they got their Africa special coming up. Oh, on Thursday, this fucking... Wait, what day is it today? Oh, tomorrow. Oh, nice. Nice. So, tomorrow... Whoops, is that the right button? Hold on. All right, here we are back at the Death Star. So, yeah, tomorrow, guys. Uh, oh, so we should hear some news about this thing then. All right. Um, nice. Tomorrow, Thursday. I didn't realize. Uh, South Beach, you know, you're, the days they run into each other. <laughs> So we'll see what goes down, but it's non-boarding, it's great, and it's a government contract. You know, once you get a government contract, uh, they tend to last pretty much forever, unless you fuck up royally. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because no one wants to change anything. It works, all right, just leave it alone. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, so Cardano Hodlers, bang! And then Vanek Bitcoin ETF is pushed off until June, June 17th to be exact. Well, while some might cry about that and seem that, look at that as a bad thing. No, no, no. No, no, no. This is a good thing. Because they could have easily just said, bang, you're denied, fuckstick. Get out of here. But the fact that they're seeing, hey, I want to take a little harder look. Yeah. And you've got a blockchain master, Gary Gensler, running the place. <laughs> Look, I, I, I've told you this already. If we don't get an ETF from Gensler, we ain't getting an ETF anytime soon. And so uh, I look at this, I view this as good news in that you're going to take a little harder look, right? Is the market manipulation really a problem? See what I'm saying? That's how you say it. Is it really a problem? Hmm. But seriously, though, um, it's also hold on, guys. Sorry, man. I got it. Ugh. All right. Sorry, guys. But um, honestly, though, um, it's great because also, you know, like I just said, Switzerland, the Germans and Canada have just been rolling out, rolling out. ETFs and ETPs like crazy lately. And so, yeah, this gives them 45 days to look at it, you know, to look at it. I mean, you know, is there market manipulation or not? Right. Um, right. And then, then, that, then that gives Gary Gensler, a blockchain master, um, another 45 days to, and then when, when the time comes up to vote, he gets to say, look, guys, we just looked at Canada. We just looked at, we just been, we've been watching Canada. We've been watching, uh, who else, who else? This is the Germans, and we've been watching Switzerland for the past few months. There's no manipulation going on. And let's get real, like I told you, here in America, well, <laughs> banksters, big oil, and the military. <laughs> That's what runs America kind of thing. And uh, he'll be getting a little pressure. You sure you're not going to approve that? Are you sure there's manipulation? Are you positive? I mean, just 
Just those kind of words. Those kind of words. <laughs> you know? Just a little pressure, you know? And so I'm I'm bullish. I'm bullish. We'll see. Maybe I'm completely wrong and they're like, fuck, no, never, you know? And it's, oh, no. <laughs> but I, I doubt that. I doubt that. I'm very bullish on this. Um, and we'll just see. I mean, you know, I'm not a fortune teller, so who knows? But uh, we'll see. So that's the news out of Anek. And that's the news out of America for our first ETF. And like I said, like once the first one's approved, well, it's just going to be approved, approved, approved. They're going to pull like a, probably pull like a, like a Canada, just a three piece chicken. Bang, bang, bang. All in one day. <laughs> Why not? Let's do it. Probably not. But because that's exceptional. Three in one day. Bang, bang, bang. That's hilarious. That Canada thing. They, they're not, fu that's. Yeah, because you want to be first. You want to be first. <laughs> you know what I mean? You want to be first of the Bitcoin ETF. So, uh, good stuff. All right. So, Van Eck ETF. Bang. We'll see. And then finally, U.S. the United States' fifth largest bank dives into crypto custody. And so, bang. Uh, Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan are offering funds to their rich clients. Uh, U.S. Bank and uh, JPY Mellon. Is it JPY? I don't remember what the... I don't remember the initials. Here's the fuel. Uh, but they, they, uh, they're offering custody. And when you have banks like that offering custody, well, if you're a hedge fund, well, you know where to custody your shit now. If you're a family office, well, you know where to custody your shit now. Um... If you're a corporation, you know where to custody your shit now. And so uh, this is great. This is great. Um, like I said, we citizens, retailers, our onboarding here for America is Coinbase. I want to take $5 out of my bank account, put it in the crypto market. I go through this thing called Coinbase. Yeah, well, rich people don't have shit like that. Well, and like I told you, they're not going to use a piece of shit like Coinbase. They're not going to do that. That's the shit we put up with. Uh, but they will put it in the U.S. Bank. They will put it in, what's it, JPY Mellon? Ah, the oldest bank in America. Well, they will put it in that. And so, uh, as we can see, the infrastructure is being built. And like we've been reading about with the ETFs and the ETPs, everyone says, every CEO says the same damn, the same damn thing. Our customers demanded it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, this is no longer, what is that crypto crap? No, people are demanding it now. Look, you got Bitcoin or what? Or do I got to take my services somewhere else? Not my services. My uh, my business somewhere else. Look, look. So that's great. That's great. But I, what else? I What I really liked that was cool about what the guy said was, he said, yeah, this isn't just a Bitcoin story. Actually, hold on. Let me even tell you the words. What did he say? He said, uh, right? He said, uh, yeah, he, that's what he did say. He said, it can't just be a Bitcoin storyline, right? In other words, this guy's going for it all, right? They want to, they're going to custody all of it. <laughs> Anything regulated, bang, we custody that. And so this is great. This is great. Because there is going to come a time when people are going to want to custody RV chains, our chain links, our stellars and singular nets and all the rest of them. And someone's got to do it. And so this guy says, yeah, well, this ain't just about Bitcoin. Uh, it's about the whole daggone market. <laughs> well, thinking big, thinking big. So uh, just great for crypto. And uh Yeah, you know, just great. Just great. I mean, there's nothing else. What other word do you want me to use? <laughs> I don't know what else to say. This is great, and it's going to be great. All right, so let's get... That's so stupid. All right, so on that note, let's chill it and kill it. Bang! Let's get you back to your wives and lives. Bang! Subscribe below. Press the bell. You get not mad notification when I do the show. The greatest show on earth. The greatest show. Yes. 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 In the multiverse. Look, my name is Shamar Clark. I love talking money.
Bang. Love talking crypto. Bang. It's the favorite time of my day. Who doesn't like talking money in crypto? Having a drink and a smoke. I mean, what the fuck else do you want to do? Talk to your wife? <laughs> Just kidding, ladies. Of course you want to talk to her, you love her, Dagon. Here, sweetie. Kiss her. Get out of here. Right? But this is the favorite time of my day. So, <laughs> thanks for having me in your home. Well, now that I've opened the bottle. Mm. You know, it's like leaving a, it's like uh, putting your hand out and then not shaking someone's hand. You know, you open the bottle, you got to have at least one sip. Uh, don't be rude. All right. So thanks for having me in your home. <laughs> and I'll see you all tomorrow with another fun fact, crypto filled day of cryptoness. So until then, subscribe here. Bang. Watch the video here. Bang. And I'll see you all tomorrow. All of you have a good night and crypto hard. Until then, my name is Shamar Clark. Bye. And I am always on duty. Yes. Yes, indeed.